Good evening. Welcome to the night's lecture of the 2009 George T. Hunter Lecture Series. When you're a kid, you don't know what's an injustice. You just know that something's wrong. When we were children uh, coming in, if you were asleep in the car, we woke up immediately coming into Alton Park because of the smell. I knew that when the buildings around my family's home started to burn down, I knew that there was something wrong. This was the plant that produced benzene and a number of other toxins that uh, caused the evacuation of the community. Poor neighborhoods are awful. They really are. You know, I don't, the only people that say that they aren't are those that have never lived in one. It's a good time house over here. They sell drugs at the little corner store. Oh, we've got a few men in trees. We have men in trees today. There's a, a phrase that I learned today, um, you know, the men in trees you know, which is the, the guys that, you know, don't really have much opportunity elsewhere. And so they just kind of hang around, you know, under, they'll find places underneath the trees and that's where they spend a good portion of their days. Obviously, everybody isn't going to be transformed. That's just not the way humanity works. But if, if you provide most people with real choices and opportunities, chances are they're going to take the choice that does them the best good. Majora Carter is well known as an activist for the environmental justice and green collar job movements. Ms. Carter founded Sustainable South Bronx in 2001 and by 2003 had implemented the highly successful Bronx Environmental Stewardship Training Program, or BEST. Her vision, drive, and tenacity earned her a MacArthur Genius Grant. Please join me in welcoming to Chattanooga, Majora Carter. Uh, you can look across here now and you'll see that's the Walnut Street Bridge. I Chattanooga is one of those places that I find so refreshing because it really wears all of its problems and all of its successes right on its sleeve. We work with uh, 16 denominations, two synagogues, a mosque. We, we specialize in trying to help people find common ground and community and say, you know, hey, do you want to work with kids? We'll argue about which way to vote later, who baptizes on what end of the baby, you know, that kind of thing. An oversaturation of affordable housing. It was all Section 8, which created its own slew of problems. I mean, it's so clear, you know, what's out there. Someone in the tour described it to go from the living room, you know, of a community to the junk drawer. You know, the living room being like in the riverfront is being totally refurbished and it's just seeing like a tremendous amount of economic development to the environmental justice communities. The thing about Alton Park is there is no land in this community that is semi-clean. Nothing is clean. You know, every community has its own version, you know, of a South Bronx. But the thing that I found most interesting about here was there was such an openness to talk. How are you? Pleased to meet you as well. When we went to visit this new development that was being built around this park and the developer was there and he spoke point blank how much he did not. He was so skeptical was about this skeptical green about stuff. Going green. We thought we already knew how to build a house and to build it well. But we've learned more and more by being educated how to build it better, to give a consumer a better product. And you talk about people being able to cut the utility bill. And then he realized that this could actually be helpful for him. Like he could create a better product that people would want. Self-interest is not a terrible thing. I think it's actually a really valuable one. It's going to take people around this table who really want it to happen in this community. When, when there was like that, that smaller community meeting that we got together. We saw, I say, I call the good, the bad, and the ugly. The fact that they were in the same room actually could have not even veiled, you know, conversations about concerns that they had was really pretty wonderful. It would be in everyone's best interest to, to figure out a way to work together. Um, so thinking about ways to really in, instill green infrastructure. I, I wish there were some flashy things we could do real quickly that were shovel ready, but um, when you have a large percentage of our county that's functionally illiterate, there's no chance to have any kind of, of real environmental sustainability in terms of the way our systems run. But illiteracy doesn't necessarily, to me, interpret as untrained. The Neighborhood Environmental College is a 
beyond the environmental issue, mm -hmm. beyond all of that. Mm -hmm. This is how we get a workforce that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. But if, if the environment is so bad that there are health issues, you don't even think about it. I mean, if you had a child and that child was in the hospital, you worried about teaching them to read and teaching them to survive. People in Summit are literally like Dying. They're dying. Like there are cancer clusters that are not researched. I don't think you guys are saying anything different. You 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 build a community you want to live in, which includes healthy people and, and, and who are loved and who are treated with respect and dignity regardless of where or who they are. Oh Lord, yeah. The issues that are there don't just stay, you know, in those communities. You know, we all pay the price, you know, of poor health when poor communities you know, suffer from it and the illnesses associated with it. We pay, you know, as, you know, there's a lack of opportunity. There is something to be said about supporting communities so that they can be less poor, which means you create economic opportunities for people as well because an economically empowered person is an empowered person. So just imagine if we trained people to do those environmental services that we need that keeps people off of our public welfare system, that actually put, keeps people gainfully employed so that they're not you know, just easy members you know, of the illegal economy, we're actually getting a twofer. You're getting people who were once tax burdens and helping them become taxpayers, which is a much better place for our country to be in when we think about it. It was interesting to see how she connected the environmental issues with the poverty within the communities. I thought it, it uh, connected up uh, so many of the really critical social issues of our time. Well, it, it certainly inspires us to think that there's hope, that you know that we can change, uh, that we can really do something in the future that's going to be a lot better than what's happened here. If they can do it in the South Bronx, they can sure change out in the park at Chattanooga Creek. We do need to think about how do you, if it's not going to be to restore some of those areas, then what do you need to do to at least make them safe, you know, for the people around them? Those are some really hard questions that have to be asked. And people have to be open to dealing, you know, with what comes out as a result of it. There will be places that you will create your own kind of domestic terrorists, people that have no sense of place or purpose. That's all that a terrorist is when it comes right down to it. And they'll do really destructive things to themselves and to people around them. And that is not the kind of country that I want to live in. But the possibilities that I saw here um, and the level of, of openness to discuss it was incredibly thought-provoking. And I thought some really amazing things could come out of it.